Shailaja, thank you so much for joining us at Storytelling by and for Adults here on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. Please introduce yourself fully. Tell us where you're telling from and, um, and please tell, tell us about your work and, and tell us a story, please. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Good evening, everyone, and wishing you all a very, very happy new year. I'm really glad to be here starting my new year off with all you wonderful people. I'm Shailaja from Bangalore in India. I'm a storyteller, a theater actor, and an educator. I love what I do and what I call as edutainment, education through entertainment. So I believe that each story I tell should somehow reach the people and it will have a value and a different perspective to a hundred different people in a hundred different ways. So that makes a lot of difference for me because it impacts each person differently and each person will have their own takeaway from that particular story. I also uh, have uh, workshops for teachers where I guide them as to how they can make education much more interesting by involving storytelling in the educational activities too. So here is the story from me. I'm tired. I'm tired of this old router and his tantrums. Uh, I know he's good. But then he can't put up his price every time I tell him something. This is not done. I mean, we are, the owner festival is around the corner and people are starting to rush into our shops to buy saris, veshtis. Ah, some of you may not know what a veshti is. It's a big expansive, normally a white cloth, which men wrap around their waist to cover from waist below. And... People come to buy saris, veshtis, towels, kerchiefs, so many things. It was a busy day. But what angers me most is what happened after the customers had left. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, myself, Shiva Ramakrishnan Iyer, um, owner of Ambi Textiles. Uh, you see, I have named it after my son, Ambi. Uh, I have about four assistants, uh, Murugan, Kolapan, Gomati, and of course that scoundrel Rautar also. Uh, my son uh, Ambi also comes to the shop. He's young and he's still learning. Uh, I have to tell you one more thing about my son. You see, he's a reporter of sorts. <laughs> my wife, the minutest details. I'm sure now he will have told her everything that happened at the shop. But I will tell you people what happened this evening. We had finished all the sales, customers had gone, we were packing up and ready to leave for a house. And I saw that router was piling cloth after cloth after cloth to almost two feet high. I went and stood next to him and observed. He couldn't care less. He behaved as if I was not there. I didn't exist. He took me for granted. He didn't even take permission from me if he could take those things on credit. Very calmly, he called out, a curl up and pack these things and give the bill to me. I was so angry. I went up to him. But I controlled my anger. What to do? I said, um, Rauter, how can you keep your debts mounting like this? It's not very good. To which he replied, Aya, what can I do, Aya? My house is full of women. Four sons, all useless. Four sons-in-law, even more useless. Four daughters-in-law, four daughters, eight granddaughters, eight grandsons. What can I do? If I pick up one cloth per person also, the amount will mount up. What shall I do? You only calculate and tell me. Huh? I was very determined. I told him, Rauter, I cannot give you credit this time. To which he instantly stood up and he said, Aya, if this is going to be the end of our relationship, I am really sorry. I am leaving. He just stood up and told 
Hey, Gomati, take me home. Gomati, my other shop assistant, she also stood up. She does the fetching and cleaning in the shop. She stood up, took Rauter's arm, placed it on her shoulder, and led him down the steps of the shop. You know, every day he would turn back, look at me, as if to take permission to leave. But today, mm -hmm, he just went away. He didn't even look back. I don't know how I'm going to manage all these festival sales without him. I don't care. Let me see. I will solve my problem by tomorrow morning. Every I'm going. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ah, uh, that is it. I can't help it. Kausalya Supraja Rama Purva Sandhya Pravartate. Uttishta narashar dula kartavyam daiva manikam. Good morning. I am Ambi. Shiva Ramakrishnan Ayar son. The song you heard just now is a wake up call in our house every morning. They play it at an ungodly hour of 5 a.m. But you see, my mother and I are exempted from this because she is arthritic and I'm asthmatic. Suppose we wake up early, it is a problem for all the others in the house. So my mother and I, we sleep in the room downstairs, she on the cot, while I sleep next to her on the ground. And we talk late into the night. But this morning, Appa has seemed to have got up early and getting ready to leave for the shop. Oh, I think he's coming towards our room. But why? Ami, wake up. I pretend to sleep. Ami, wake up. Mm -hmm, I'm not getting up. Ami, wake up and go to the Rauta's house and bring him to the shop immediately. I don't care. You have to convince him to come to the shop. Get going. Now, this was not the time to be funny. So I just got up, got ready. I just wore a waist over my shorts. Put on a full arm shirt. You know, I have to be impressive to Rauter to convince him to come to the shop. I got ready. Appa shouted from outside. The buggy will return from the shop. Be ready by that time. Okay, Pa, said I. And Appa left. I went to Amma and told her that I was leaving. She said, come here, Kanna. Please tell Rauter that I apologize on Appa's behalf. Tell him that I am very sorry for what happened and he shouldn't misunderstand Appa's short temper. Will you do so? Yes, Ma, I will, said I and left. You know, even I think that we cannot manage Onam sales without Rauter. You know why? He is lightning quick in mental arithmetic. He can just listen to any numbers, calculate, tally and give the grand total. Even people who flock together on a regular basis stand around him and exclaim, Oh my goodness, he does all these calculations so quickly. In I mean, in spite of being blind, oh my God, what if he had sight? This is too much. I reached Rauter's house. It was a small hut, had a few steps, a low roof. And a gunny sack for a door. He was living in dire poverty, poor guy. I called out to him from outside. Tata, Rauter Tata. Tata means grandpa. I called him that. Who is it, child? The voice came from inside. It's me, Ambi. Come, come, come in, come in, he said. I stepped in and saw him sitting on the ground. Cross-legged, like a lord in his house. I went close to him and he pressed me down on my shoulders, made him sit beside me and felt me. He felt even my face, eyes, ears, nose and everything. And he said, <laughs> thank God they're all in place. People in the shop also tell me that you look exactly look like your appa. Tata, Tata, I started to say whatever Amma had told me to, but then he wouldn't let me talk. Amma, how is Amma? 
Is her asthma okay? You know what? I will give her medicines. Actually, your father is fond of bottles with English labels on them. But I have medicine. No English. <laughs> he laughed. And that was the time I butt in and said, Rautar Tata, Amma has asked you to go to the shop immediately. She apologizes on Appa's behalf. Oh my goodness, she is such a gentle lady. I will go to the shop. Let's go immediately, said he. And we went to the shop. Oh, the sales for Onam were fantastic. It was very good. Rautar Tata was in his element. He managed the whole show fantastically, like, you know, fighting like Abhimanyu in Mahabharata. He managed everything very well, calling out the totals, calculating and giving it to the cashier. He could even calculate the cost and price of 16 different items of different rates. But the total would be accurate. Amma often tells me that when uh, Appa and Rautar were associated in the beginning, Appa would come home and tally all the numbers from morning till evening and try and find a mistake. But he could not find even a single mistake. Only that he would lose his sleep for the entire night. One day, a few weeks later, a bullock cart came in front of a shop. It was covered on all sides. And the sound of wailing women and children was being heard from there. Rautar ran down the steps of the shop and went to the cart, inquired from them as to what had gone wrong. He came back, howling his head off. Ayya, please help me, Ayya. The poor Tamina has come and it, the house has gone up for an auction because I have not paid my loan with interest, which comes up to 5,000 rupees. What shall I do? No, where shall I go? Appa said, Rautar, stop it. Let's go to the lawyer. I pay whatever has to be paid and the problem will be solved. Okay, Ayya, thank you. They went to the lawyer, paid up everything and returned. The next morning, Rautar didn't come to the shop. Appa said, what happened to this guy now? He has not come. Immediately, called up and piped in. Ayya, I saw Rautar sitting in Chetiyar shop and calculating. Huh? What nonsense. What a wicked world. I can't believe even my mother. Come on now, go and bring him. Yes, Ayya, I will go. Said immediately, called up and cycled up to Chetiyar shop and brought him. Rautar came sitting on the carrier with his head hung in shame. And as soon as he got off the cycle, he said, Sorry, Ayya, Chetiyar promised to pay all the other debts also if I went and worked in his shop. So I went, I was, something went wrong in my head. Ayya, I will never do this mistake. My father was very angry. He said, I'll cut you down to size, Rautar. Please don't say that, Ayya, please, said Rautar. But the opportunity to cut him down to size seemed to have come very soon because some days later, my appa went to Bombay for a conference. And when he returned, he had a machine. He came home and showed that machine to Amma. He said, give me a sum to Amma. Amma rattled off some numbers. And he gave the right answer in seconds. Amma said, did it all do by itself? Yes. Shall I give some more sums? Yes, of course. Some more sums with bigger denominations were given. And the answer was right in a jiffy. Give it to me, asked Amma. She tried out many sums. And I took it from her. I tied in a number of numbers. A calculator. I was very excited. I sat day and night and played with it and gave it difficult sums of all kinds and it gave right answers in seconds. I said, Rautar Tata's brain has gone into this calculator. I'm going to take it to the shop. I went to the shop and sat next to Rautar Tata while he was calculating. I was quiet. And as call up and called out the numbers, I also typed them in into the calculator and got the answer. Rautar Tata announced the total and so did I and I said, you are right Tata. How do you know? Asked Tata. 
take this, I said. And he felt the calculator on its front, on its back side, and asked me, did this do everything? Yes, Tata. He was shocked. His hands were shivering and he gave it back to me. And he said, you keep it to yourself. I don't want it. And he was in a state of daze. He was in a state of daze for the whole day. Gomati and I took over the calculations with the help of the calculator. From that day onwards, Tata was a changed person. He became very quiet. He slowly stopped eating and he looked just like a walking corpse. The laughter, the merriment, the teasing, all that had stopped. We never realized. One day, Murugan was quoting a price and he said it was 16 rupees, 10 paise of a big towel. Immediately, Rautar Tata said, no, it is 17 rupees, 10 paise. Go bring it, check it again. Appa came and stood next to Rautar and he asked him, Rautar, do you know the prices of all? Ah, yeah, I know from memory, said he. Fine, what is the price of a small kerchief? Three rupees, two paise. What is the price of a biggest towel? 34 rupees, 25 paise. Like this, he went on asking price after price, cost after cost, after of various materials and garments. And Rautar Tata rattled them off. Appa was very impressed. He said, okay, fine. From now onwards, you come and sit next to me. So that whenever somebody mentions a price, you know that it is the right price they are quoting. The smile, the smile written very gently into Rautar Tata's face. And slowly he told Appa, can you please turn that fan a little more towards my side too? You was truly will also get some cool breeze. Appa gave the desired order. And then suddenly he told Appa, Appa, Aya, today is the last day for paying the electricity bill. Oh, yes, Rautar, I completely forgot about it. Where is Kolapan? Call him. Kolapan hasn't come today, Ayya. How do you know? Every person has a smell and a voice. I didn't smell him nor hear him today. That's amazing, Rautar, said he. That night, when Rautar and Gomati started to leave for home. She asked him, Tata, are you not going to do any more bills? To which Tata replied, ha, ha, I am no more just a adding machine, my dear. I am Rauter, Ibrahim Hassan Rauter, the manager of the shop. Thank you. This is a yes. Uh, this is a story by Sundara Ramaswamy called Reflowering. And w w what do you think the that term reflowering refers to? It's him coming back to his original self, where he found a purpose and a aim and goal for his life. Mm -hmm. Joe? Yes, Joe. I assume, uh, Shalaja, that you are a, a, a trained uh, actor. Uh, I was so impressed by the brilliance of the way you created the characters, me and his father, uh, distinguishing them. That was a cute trick with the thank the, you um, the screen the screen. Um, but I really appreciated the way you did the dialogue and how I understood it because you had different speech rhythms okay. uh, for each of the characters. I think sometimes people think that you need to have different pitches for different 
character, but it's really not true. You What you demonstrated was that they can be in the same pitch range, but the rhythms and the slight differences in accent uh, made all the difference. I really learned a lot from listening to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam, you were way of uh, uh, expressions, not only in voice, the face expressions are also very much impressive. <clears throat> Actually, it creates a, it, and that way of expressions, body, face expressions, everything conveying the messages very easily and easy, oh, easy to you. grasp it. Okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much for uh, uh, how to uh, how to tell the story. I just want to learn it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gustavo? Yes, that was a beautiful story. I uh, I I had all the time a smile in my face because you told it so so lively, and it, it remembered me a story. That story about also that story about the hunter, the two hunters. There's an old old story that goes a hunter who goes with a blind man, and mm -hmm. the blind man knows that the lion is near because he knows. And don't you know that story? It's very nice because. It's the, the, the combination between- I've yet to read it, yes. It makes me remember and it actualizes that story. Thank oh. you very much. You were very, very expressive. I learned a lot with you. Thank you. Thank you, Gusto. Thank you. So it seems one theme of the story is the, um, uh, the, the, the kind of the competition between the human mind and the uh, and the calculator and the machine yes mm -hmm. and that is so true today when so many jobs have been taken away by machines mm. but there are some things that a machine cannot uh, cannot duplicate even with the artificial intelligence yes emote all right anybody else Hmm. So why why do you especially love that story? Why do you choose it? Why do you tell it? When I read that story, I just liked how uh, the description was when his intelligence is taken away by the calculator and how he feels so lifeless, which hmm. blossoms the moment his strengths are recognized by his boss. Hmm. Like so many, the kind of memory he has about the prizes or whatever, not just prizes, even the la last date of electricity bill. I, I mean, there are many other mentions also in the story, which I had to cut down for the sake of time. Mm -hmm. So it is those things of his mental faculties, which were kind of reduced to nothing with the machine. Mm -hmm. But when it was recognized, he came back to life. He blossomed all over again. Mm. Wonderful. Okay. Shalaja, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Eric. Very good.